Okay, so today we're going to be going over an 820-3437 board with no backlight. Now, it should be kind of obvious, even without a microscope, you get to a point where you're just going to look at it at an angle like this, and you're going to see what I see, which you can see over here, which is that this chip has no balls. Big problem. And this is the LED driver. And I would be willing to bet my own that it's missing a pad under the balls as well. So if I turn the light up here, I had the light low today. For some reason, my eyes were just kind of sensitive to it. Uh, if I remove that, I'm pretty sure that that pad is gone, which is going to make this miserable. But let's see what we can do. So I'm going to turn on all the loud stuff here, and we'll get started. Fuck. Yep, pad is gone. You saw I was going really slow there because I was hoping to preserve the pad. But who are we kidding? I'll show you in the schematic a little later why that is the first thing to blow. That's the highest voltage point in the backlight circuit, the feedback portion. So if anything bad happens there, that is the first, first place where you're going to see that type of nastiness. Now, usually I would like to have the balls be flat, and after the balls are flat, then I would put the chip on. However, here, I'm going to want the balls to have some something on them. Because the thing is, I'm going to have... In order to solder a wire in there, it's going to kind of be lifted up a little bit, and there's going to, you know... go. A little bit of gentle out of focus scraping there. So I'm going to shove a wire in there. And I'm going to keep that flux mess exactly as it is. I know some people are going to troll that, but the whole reason of keeping the flux mess there is it's going to keep my wire from blowing away, which I very desperately need. So Now, for those of you who are in, haven't watched the other videos, what I use is a wire from a broken A1286 2011 battery. You know, any of this kind of stuff, but like any of those unibody batteries for the MacBook, MacBook Pro, the strands inside are perfect for this type of thing, for running a wire underneath a BGA chip. And the MacBook Air ball A5 of the LED driver and the trace is the fuse. It's not the fuse, it's this. Hacko CHP 3SA tweezers are great for this. If you're finding that handling small jumpers like this is near impossible with your current equipment, uh, check out these tweezers. Hacko CHP 3SA, they don't, I don't get paid to sponsor this shit. I pay for my tweezers full price on Amazon every time. The reason I like these is not because they get, you know, because there are a lot of trolls that say I get paid for recommendations and shit like that. Uh, the thing is, everybody likes Weeha tools, and I like their screwdrivers too. But their tweezers are like 30 to 40 bucks. And for this type of work, they're just, uh, in, my, in my opinion, they suck. Uh, you know, they're, they're not bad tweezers, but for like this type of crap, they're just not what I need. Whereas the Hacko ones are like 5 to 15 bucks on Amazon Prime. And, you, and if you watch the eBay or Amazon video, you know how I feel about eBay and Amazon. Trust me, I'm not trying to give them any extra money. But the thing is uh, that they're cheap, I can get them quickly. And they fit the bill for this stuff. Much better than the other tools from the other companies, so... There's not really much I can say there.
Okay, I got my wire in place. Now again, the reason I'm leaving that area nasty is because if I start cleaning it, you know, I just learned my lesson at this point in life to leave well enough alone. So, I'm going to grab an LED driver chip. You know, you're welcome to ultrasonic the board after all of this is soldered, after all of it's in place, but before it's all in place, no thank you. That's just... Some fresh flux, because we didn't have enough already. We need more. Do this. Make sure all the balls have flux on them. Now the bottom right ball is going to flow into the wire instead of flowing into the into a into a pad, which is fine. holding my hot air station very far away because it's not my intention to melt anything just yet. I pushed down the middle and it didn't move, which means that it's probably in place. So at this point, it can be my intention to melt things. But see, I work slowly. My air, is, I have the air up to like 70% or so. So I'm shooting air out pretty quickly. A lot of people are afraid of blowing away the chip. The thing is, the chip is going to follow the heat. And if the board is cold, it's not going to follow the board, so that's why I want to heat the board up first before I go into side of the chip. So this way, the chip will want to stick to what is warm, which is going to be the hot BGA pads underneath it that are sitting on top of a hot board. And the way I gauge the temperature is by seeing where the flux is. Once the flux is kind of melted away, I know that, that the board is hot in that area. Now I go in close. The chip didn't want to dance much. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Let's take a look and see what it looks like under here. Okay, it looks pretty shitty. Yeah, it looks pretty, pretty shitty. Let's try that again. See how all the balls are kind of... The balls are stuck up. Those are some stuck up balls. Yeah. Okay. Pump the air up. And try this again. Probably just a shitty alignment job on my... Let's see. Now, I want to be very clear here. I was not pushing down as hard as I can, because if I do that, all the balls will come out. I was pushing down a tiny bit. I wasn't doing this, like, mm, with the intention of pushing it all down. I knew that if I did that, I would push it down too much. So let's say this is the board, these are the balls, and this is the chip. I wasn't trying to push it down like this. I was trying to do this, like, you understand? I wasn't doing this. I wasn't pushing it all the way down, because if I push it all the way down, all those balls are going to come running out. I pushed it down like this. Just a little bit just to push it into place. That was how I corrected my mistake. And when you look at it now, the results are much better. So see, that's how you can correct a bad BGA solder job in case any of you suck like me and can't solder the stuff in properly. Let's get the microscope a little higher so you can see that better. See? Same chip, same everything, just corrected the bad soldering job by just putting a tiny bit of pressure down. Now just to test a couple of other things, let's see if the fuse is good. There's something funny about the, the, the backlight fuse in a MacBook Air. It, it virtually never goes bad, 
everything is the fuse in a MacBook Air besides the actual fuse. The ball of feedback, the LCD connector, the LCD cable. And because I said that out loud, this is one of the very, very few times the fuse is actually bad. Go fucking figure. Oh, right, so. Go fucking figure. That's the way it works. Just so you can see, I'm not making this up. I'm on the third fuse on this spool. I bought this in like the beginning of last year. I mean, it's... And the last thing to do before hooking this up to a screen and checking out if it works is to check for a short to ground. Nope. By the way, when I say that you can use diode mode as a method of troubleshooting or cheating, the number that you're going to get on a newly soldered circuit, particularly if it's still hot, is going to be totally different than the number that you're going to get on a circuit that's been used that also isn't still boiling hot. So with that said, let's plug in a screen here, see what I get. So we have to get a DC inboard. A fan would be useful just so we can see if it's turning on. Ha, huh, I'm using the fan already. And a screen. Do you have an air screen I can use to test this? I have an air screen to do the pick screen. That's good. Thanks. Oh, making a funny face at the camera while I was waiting. Look, it's beautiful. So that's how you can correct a um, bad BGA soldering job. And that's how you can see if it works. And that's also how you can run a jumper wire underneath a BGA chipset if there is a destroyed pad. Which again, if you're doing anything to this specific model computer, you're going to be doing that like five times a week. Very common.